All right, so we're back with yet another video with the YouTube Data API. And in this video, I'm gonna go ahead and cover playlists. So pretty much playlists are just, uh, you know, you can think of them as organized lists of YouTube videos that you can have on YouTube. And I'll show you how we can programmatically, or not programmatically, but create a playlist using the YouTube Data API. So the first thing that you'll have to ensure is that you have your access token, okay? Um, I can't stress enough, just make sure you watch the previous videos where I show you how to actually set up uh, Google OAuth 2 and it will show you how to get the access token and I'll show you how you can provide that in the request body as well or not request body, the uh, headers. Now, um, you will also need at least one of the following scopes. Now, we actually already have, I think, YouTube and YouTube uh, Force SSL. Uh, so we're fine in this situation, but just make sure you have at least one of these three scopes. And let's go ahead and just copy this URL. We will need to make a post request. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a new tab in Postman. Paste this here. And let me go ahead and grab my access token or, yep, my headers. Uh, let's see. Authorization, whoops. There we go. So that's the same one from the previous video where we talked about comments and I showed you how to create comments. All right, so what we need to do is we'll go ahead and provide the part query parameter. So part, and you should really know what this is by now. It just allows you to select certain uh, certain uh, properties that will be included in the API response. And in this situation, I will want to include ID, snippet, and uh, that's it. Okay. And now we will need to provide a request body. The mandatory value that you'll need to provide in the request body is the snippet.title property. So obviously because the playlist is going to need a title. And let me actually go over to my YouTube channel real quick. So give me one second. All right, so you can see currently that uh, in our library section, I actually don't have any playlist at all. So we're gonna create one right now. Uh, so we'll need to have a title. And you can set additional properties too, such as description, privacy status, default language, and localization stuff. Um, so let's go ahead and go into Postman and let's go ahead and do this. So let's select body raw JSON. Okay, so that's the request body, uh, the, a raw request body, and then the type will be JSON, okay? And then we're gonna provide an, an object, has the property snippet, and then title, and we'll just say my favorite songs. And then description, optional, we'll do a playlist of my favorite songs I listen to. And we can set the privacy status, which I'm not sure what value you can even provide for this. Um, It should say it's somewhere here. I wish uh, they just showed it somewhere here, but uh, I think playlist resource might kind of tell us right over here. Yep. It's a string. Oh yeah, perfect. There we go. Perfect. So yeah, if we look at overview, we can see the actual value. So private, public, unless... Okay. Uh, we'll just leave this alone because I think by default, it will just set to public. Um, so we'll just leave that alone. All right, so let's go ahead and... Uh, let's just refresh the page. We can see that we don't have the playlist currently. Okay. If I go ahead and click send successful response, let's go ahead and refresh and we can see that we have a playlist. Okay. But it has nothing though. And it actually, I think this is actually a private playlist. So I think by default, it actually is, um, by default, it's a private playlist. Okay. All right. So, uh, now that we've created the playlist. Okay, if we wanted to update the playlist, we can use the update method. Okay, and you would have to use a put request to the same endpoint slash playlist, same scopes. And the only difference is that you would need to uh, make sure you provide the ID of the playlist. Uh, I'm not sure why it requires a title to be honest with you, because why should you, I guess, I guess, yeah, it doesn't make sense why it says title is required. Um, because the title will be the same anyways, unless you want to update it. Because what if you don't update the title? 
But uh, let's go ahead and update the privacy status. So let's set this to a pull request. Um, let's see. The ID is what I'll copy over here. Um, and we can go ahead and set the ID. So the ID actually has to go one level outside. So ID, paste the ID over there. Um, and then we'll just set the privacy status to public. Okay. So privacy status public. I'm going to go ahead and remove the title and see if anything happens. Okay, so apparently it does need a playlist title, which I find very weird, but it's okay. Okay, so let's just take a look at the response. Okay, it seems like everything was fine. I can also include another... Uh, I can also include, like, another... Um, another value for the part query parameter. The status, I think, was one of them. And I think that's just the privacy status. Yep. And you can see that it says private. I'm not sure why it says private, though. It should be public. Did I do it correctly? Yeah, I did it correctly. Let's refresh. Why is it still private? That's interesting. Did I... Oh, it's status, not privacy status. Whoops, sorry about that. Whoops, so status. Privacy. Status. Public. Let's go ahead and click send, and we should see the status now public. If I refresh. Whoops, didn't mean to refresh that. I mean, to refresh the page itself, you'll see that it's now public. You see that the private icon is not there anymore. Okay, so that's great. So, uh, yeah, now we know how to update the playlist itself. We can also update the name, like the title of the playlist, for example. And if I wanted to do that, uh, I would just update snippet that title. So, my favorite songs of 2022. And if I refresh... You can see that that's the name of the playlist. Perfect. And of course, if you wanted to fetch the playlist, you would just make a get request. And this would get you all the playlists. You would have to filter it, of course. You can filter it by channel ID. And this should, this should return, I believe, the, uh, the channel ID's public playlist, I think. You can also do mine. And uh, this is only able to be used in an authorized request. So if you want to fetch your own playlist, you would just set the mine query parameter and set that to true let's go ahead and do that real quick just to show you how this works so let's go ahead and do playlist uh let's do for part we'll do id status and snippet and then mine equals true and of course we already have our authorization token okay and let's click on send and you can see that we have our playlist you can see that the title description I think I may have overrided the description from the previous update of the playlist, so maybe that's why it's not being shown right now. But you can see that we have our playlist information over here, so that's perfect. So uh, hopefully this video makes sense. In the next episode, I will show you how you can actually add stuff into the playlist. Uh, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.